been in Japan for quite a while now. I've been here for over eight years. I'm close to seven. I just calculated it. Thank you. Omerito. So yeah, we've been here for a while. So we're going to tell you from our first-hand experience, the pros and cons to living in Japan, especially living in Japan long term. So it's been a long ride and I'm ready to take you along in my car. Oh, you have a car? It's a convertible too. Oh my God. <laughs> Let's get started. <laughs> Do you guys want to hear some good news or some bad news? Let's start with the good news. Okay, so one of the pros of living in Japan is that you're living in Japan. Yeah, it's actually really great. It's one of the coolest countries in the yeah. world. And that's why we can't leave because it's so freaking awesome. Yeah. I wouldn't be here if I didn't love Japan. Like, yeah, it's my favorite. There are so many reasons why Japan is awesome. And I can just list a few. Number one, so much fun stuff to do all the time. You've got changing of seasons, you've got festivals, you've got fun food. Oh, that's one of my favorite things. Always something yeah. to do, somewhere to go, easy to travel. I feel like Tokyo in particular has just so much going on all the time. There's so much to explore and it's just very entertaining and it never feels boring. That's so true. Yeah. I'm always like, what should I do today? Oh wow, I have a hundred things I could do. Mm. And the one other thing I'll say, it's it's not a con, but it's something that affects me daily that I can't do it all. I'm like, you I can't, can't it visit all. it all. You all the cafes, all. the restaurants, <laughs> the areas, the hidden gems. Even if I lived here from like zero to a hundred, I don't think I could uncover everything I want to. Yeah, I agree. There's somehow almost too much. <laughs> Much, but I, I love it. And also I would say Tokyo, compared to the rest of the major cities around the world, I think is very affordable and like reasonable to live in. You're able to have your own apartment usually or like really good share houses at reasonable rates compared to the rest of the big cities in the world, I would say. True. So that's a very, very positive thing. Yeah. Here's a big old con. You're leaving your home country and your family. <laughs> your friends. Your friends. Comfort. Like, any life you've built up there, you're leaving it. And there's so many amazing things in Japan and everything and it's great, but also that's a really huge thing to be leaving family behind. It depends on your family situation, of course, and your relationship with your family, but I feel like as more time passes, it's like, oh, I really put a lot of distance there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there are positives with it. When I see my family, it's so- Treasure the time. Yeah, it's so enjoyable. There are so many positive, great memories and you get to do amazing things together because it's such a short time. You usually do like- Put a lot of effort stuff. in. Yeah. You're like, okay, let's do this. Yeah. And people are more active and like spending time with you. Whereas if you, maybe if we lived in Australia, we wouldn't see our families as like intensely or regularly. Yeah. Potentially. Because yeah. like who gets to spend like one month to two months living in their family home yeah. as an adult? Not a lot of people yeah. once you've moved out. I also feel like it can have a pos like this, I don't know if this is for everyone, but it can have a positive effect mm. if you manage to get like some space from your family mm. and then you get to come together and it's like if you were close to each other the whole time, you might be like, oh my god, these guys suck. <laughs> yeah. I don't know about everyone's situation, but yeah, it could be a positive thing. I've yeah. heard that a lot actually yeah. from expats. Yeah. And I think Another thing is there's a positive, but you miss your friends, you miss big moments. So it's really hard yeah. to be like over here. You miss potentially weddings, birthdays, milestones. Yeah. So you always see that online or you hear from family. So there are like a lot of things that you don't realize you miss out on. And if you want to see them, it's like, okay, that's going to be a that, of thousands of dollars. <laughs> yeah. yeah, These important things, you can experience them, but it, it all adds up. Yeah. I, I think these days though, luckily for us, technology is so advanced that we can not just call them, we can see them, we can yeah. hear them. We can get voice messages, we can send photos, be real time, live stream. And so I think back in the day, I know my mom moved to Germany and there was just like international mail, like writing pen and paper. Yeah, yeah. And so I can't, I don't know how people did it back then. I don't know how you did mom, but I don't think I could get by without my phone and just calling up people. Yeah. Whenever there's an issue. Calling, and like free. texting, yeah. just being like, oh, how, how's it going? Oh, you're free for a chat right now. Like I'm just calling at any that. moment. Yeah. So it is a lot more manageable. Yeah. And Definitely. yeah, care packages go along. But other than that, I think also another con is just being away from what's comfortable because Australia for us is our home and we grew up there but coming here it's just like a whole new you aren't experience. able to rely on someone to help you like like your mom like oh I'm setting up a bank account oh, I need my mom to help me or, or if like, you're sick yeah oh I'm sick oh I have to take care of myself or if I wanted to learn how to renovate or something I can't be like hey dad can you do you know how to tile can you yeah. come and help me learn how to tile my place unless you build a really <laughs> strong network but they're not at the end of the day unless you marry or like you have family who's moved over. They're not family. And so yeah. things aren't the same. Like, you know, if some family will do almost anything for you in a lot of situations, whereas yeah. like friends, you can't always be like, hey, can you do yeah. this for me? Yeah. I mean, depending on how close you are. So yeah, yeah, yeah that's really hard. Yeah. Well, I guess to bring it back to a positive note, huge thing for me, I just feel like the quality of life here is generally really good. I mean, yeah, <laughs> just in, in general, I think there's good access to healthcare, affordable rent, general safety, really good public transport. I think the weather's really nice too. <laughs> like it's just, I feel like daily life, it's like, 
Yeah, you know, it depends on the person, of course, and your situation. Some stresses that are in other countries don't really feel it here, mm. I guess. I think Japan's one of the safest countries in the world for crime. As you were saying, it's also one of the cheaper places if you're in a major city for rent. Yeah. Also, there's a lot of great food options. Eating out is very affordable. Yeah, so if you like is, yeah, food, country. you're going to have a good time because yeah. there's so much variety. It's Although it's a very homogenous country, the amount of food from around the world in one city is just like huge. Yeah, it's super nice. Yeah. Just quickly on the crime thing, crimes do still happen here. Yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah, I just don't want to minimize that it is, that is still a thing, but like I feel like in comparison, I feel yeah. very safe here. Yeah, especially as a woman, you can walk around and not have to always be concerned. Of course, you got to be about your wits, you know. But I don't get catcalled here in Australia oh, as yeah. as like a younger person. I would get catcalled out cars. I'd have people yeah. yelling at me. Here, I haven't had that that kind of. Don't worry, people actually. take photos of your underwear here. Oh, uh, that's true. Yeah. Well, that balance is out. That balance. <laughs> They just don't tell yeah. you. They just yeah. don't yell at you. It's, very, it's, it's a there's subtle. No, there's no way, like a loud stuff happening. There's subtle. There's subtle terrible yeah. things. <laughs> just had to throw that in there. Yeah, yeah. That's a pro. <laughs> While there are many positives to living here, there are times when there are negatives. And currently, if you're not aware, there is a really big economic issue in Japan, and that has to do with the yen. The yen is the weakest it has been in many, many years, which means that not only is international travel extremely expensive, but anything you buy in Japan is likely affected by the increased import cost as well as producing it and then buying it. So even in your daily life, everything is costing more because nothing is completely produced in Japan for the most part. So even your iPhone, like the prices have gone up or, you know, food, like potentially, I don't know, things that required ingredients from overseas. Yeah. yeah. So it's a huge snowball effect. Like you think, oh, it's fine. I'm earning in yen. No, it's not fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yen right now is, is uh, pretty rough. I mean, for tourists, it's awesome because yes. they get to come over and everything is so cheap right yeah, now. Cheap. If we want to fly overseas to see our family or anything like that, everything is so expensive going overseas, especially if it's like a UK or like if, if anyone's going to the US. No, it's off the table. Like there's no way. The cost of everything is crazy. In yen, it's Sky insane. Yeah. So right now I feel like a lot of people are just a little stuck here, unable to afford going back to home countries to, to see people. I also believe it's so extreme that people are leaving Japan, people who have worked here, mm. because I've read it a lot online really? um, on forums and people are just trying to leave because they don't see a future here. Wow. And so especially if they've earned so well, like you've got this income, there's like stagnant wages here, real yeah, wages, yeah. the cost is falling and falling. I read an yeah. article on the way to the studio this morning. Oh it's just terrible. And so right. people have to think about their future and supporting families. And it might not just be viable to stay here. Mm, right. So it's quite extreme and hopefully things take a turn for the better. Uh, if you're a tourist right. thinking to come to Japan, don't come next year, come now come because now. you Literally can't guarantee right that maybe it'll get better for you, but maybe it can also just flip like a coin at any moment. Yeah. So there's good things and bad things, but as a person yeah. living here and who earns majority in like yen, it hurts mm. for everyday life. And the Japanese people are really suffering. People can't buy the same groceries, they can't do the same things because yeah. it's just really expensive. So yeah, and another thing, just it's not related to the yen, but like wages here don't grow. They're generally They're really stagnant. Low. And like inflation for the first time in years in Japan is finally taking off, but there's there's nothing to match it. So if you earn 3 million yen for your salary and you don't have an increase, but everything's increasing. So you're essentially earning less money because wages do not change here. So that's something to keep in mind. If you plan to move to Japan, you might be earning a lot less than you realize. Also generally, I know right now is really bad, but generally the cost of things would be less than what they would be probably in your home country, depending where you're from. So sometimes lower wages, it's like rent is generally lower here and everything, but still I think the wages are still too low for yeah, if you have a family, it's a particularly yeah. difficult situation. So yeah, keep yeah. that in mind. Yeah. <laughs> but as a tourist, you're living the dream. Yeah. Yeah. So I need to think of a pro that comes off that. <laughs> it's like, I feel like that's such an intense con, but there are still really amazing things about living in Japan. I would say one big thing for me is convenience of everything. Very good. I get like culture Excellent. shock when I go back home. How inconvenient How inconvenient is. everything is. I'm like, the toilet seat is cold and I have to use paper and, and it's not washing my butt and there's no trains going everywhere and convenience oh, stores like oh I need something and, I, and I'm hungry oh wait the shops closed at 5 p.m. here it's it's like 24-hour access everywhere. to everything I can give you an example we were in the studio and I kind of hurt my hand just before and I was like I need some ice I raced down and grabbed a bucket of ice yeah. like a packet and I just started icing if it was Australia you'd have to drive to a supermarket it wouldn't just be like down the street yeah it's just everything is within like a, a short walk in Tokyo 
Tokyo is so convenient and so easy. I feel like it gets me going out more because mm. I'm like, oh, I just need to grab something. Let me just go for a walk and grab it rather than having to get in a car and drive all yeah. the way to a supermarket and then get in and find parking and everything. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's just like, oh, let me just, let me just. Hup, hup, hup. Also with the convenience store, you can buy tickets for like the Ghibli Museum or you can pay your rent there. You can pay bills. The convenience store doesn't just provide food, but you can buy things like laundry detergent. You can buy toothbrushes, you can buy everything and then pay bills. Like we're blessed here. Yeah. Like for lazy people, Japan is the place to be. Yeah, it's very, very nice. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. Just, yeah. The convenience is is such a huge factor. I, I feel like, I don't know, people might be like, oh yeah, that sounds alright, but whatever. But it, once you have it, you can't take it back. Like you go yeah. to your home country, like there's no 7-Eleven, there's no family money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is a personal one, and I think it depends on the country you're based in, but I love how safe Japan is for also riding bikes and how mm. accepted it is. Because in Australia, I think it's like really scary to be on the road. Like you think someone's yeah. gonna hit you, but here, like, Oh, it's just so nice. You get on the bike and you ride to the cafe and you're like, hello. Yeah. And it's just like, you get to do a bit of exercise and it's normalized. Whereas no one meets people by riding bikes. And I think it's also the layout of the city, you know, mm. especially places like Kyoto, it's really bike friendly, but even yeah. Tokyo, you can do it by bike. I didn't do it for the first like three years I was here, but now I'm like bike. It's so good. It's the city planning. Like a lot of cities overseas in like America and Australia as well, it's built for cars. Yeah. And so there's not a safe area for cyclists to be properly separated from the cars. We're a walkable city. We're a walkable city. Yeah, so you can just walk. And yeah. I know for Americans, that's mind blowing. Cause I didn't <laughs> know America was not walkable. Did you yeah. know that? I think only New York is like the mainly walkable city. But other than that's that, wild. it's it's built for cars. Yeah. It's all like strodes and these like, you drive your car to a big complex yeah. and park and yeah. So here it's like, you know, you go out your front door, you get on a bike and you, bike is a means of transport. Yeah. It just means you can get there faster. So it adds in Sometimes. like some healthy exercise yeah. and healthy movement throughout your day to just get to different spots. It is actually faster than the train at times. Yeah, actually though, if you look, it's crazy. If you look in Tokyo, it's like point A to point B. And it's, it's like, like car, half an hour, train, 45. No, I'd say sometimes for me, it's like the same amount as a car. It's always longer for me. Really? <laughs> for me, it's usually about the same. And then like, yeah, train. And yeah. then like bike, it's like 20, 20 minutes, oh. 15, 20 minutes. And I am so obsessed with Loop. Loop is a bicycle that you can rent. There's also a scooter version. Mm -hmm. And all you need is the app. You just do it like a little test, submit your contact details and everything and you're good to go and yeah. it's so good. There are so many loop stations around Tokyo. Like I cannot explain to you how many loop stations there are. So you reserve uh, either an electric, like an e-scooter or a e-bike and then you go, you get on it, you take You don't even need a pedal. It's just so fast yeah. because it does all the work because it's electric. Yeah. And it's so cheap. It's cheaper than the train all of the time. Yeah, I've and used it for like an hour hour and two hours and it's it's really not yeah. that expensive. Yeah. They had a campaign like two weeks ago, Golden Week, it was all free. What? Yeah, I used it like eight times. <laughs> what the heck? I didn't even see that. Oh no. Aww. Well yeah, Loop is really good and it's That's kind crazy. of new. Like it, it's been here for a while but it hasn't become as big as it is because they got rid of Pippa in Kyoto, which is what I used to use. Oh. Because it's overtaken. I so see. yeah, look into like renting a bike and stuff. Yeah, it's it's worth it. And yeah, really enjoyable cycling around. All right, time for a con. No. Uh, I know, but it's a big one. The sheer amount of paperwork and like hoops you have to jump through and walls that will just appear out of nowhere and you think something's gonna be so straightforward and it never, it never is. is. Visas, like all that kind of stuff is really rough. <laughs> it's it's really rough. It's all in Japanese, like opening bank accounts, doing any, like not you even opening. Be English. I think there opening, yeah, opening a bank account is probably the easiest bit. Then it's like any kind of bank stuff or working out visa stuff. You know what? I hate the number of times you have to write your name on a single document and your address. Like, I think at the most it's been like four or five and I'm like, I have to do it again yeah. in pen. I had to write my name in kanji. I had to do a lease renewal. Kanji? Uh, you have a name? Sorry, like, not sorry. I meant my, my address in kanji. <laughs> well, Natsuki many years ago wrote my name in kanji and it was- Your last name as well. It was Laughing Devil. Wow. Just, just Emma. Yeah, I was like, nice. Wow. <laughs> uh, yeah, writing my address in that. Japanese I... over and over and over and over. Cause it's long. The addresses here are freaking long, man. Oh man, th this time I wrote my address over and over and over and it's so long. And then I got my, my hunko out. Was it wrong? No, it was oh, right, but I got my that. hunko out. And the guy like, watched me, he was like, do you want me to do your hunko for you? I know that you're foreign and this is probably like, it's something you've never oh, done yeah, before. Oh yeah, you Yeah, and I was like, you could have written my address for me. <laughs> the kanji takes so long. And he's just like, yeah, stamps, This you don't have this in your home country. I'm like, you could have written. <laughs> yeah. You know what 
was so frustrating. I was actually at the bank yesterday and I was like, I gotta do some stuff. This is something anyone who's not Japanese or Japanese heritage will encounter. You have a name, a middle name or a long name. My name is not that long. I don't know, it's probably like within 15 like letters. Yeah. It didn't fit on the like yeah. document. Like there was an app for yeah. my bank, like online banking. And they're like, oh, your name doesn't fit. And I was like, so what can I do? They're like, yeah, like it's an issue. And I was like, can you fix it? And they were like, let me check. So she runs to the room, comes back, comes back and forth. So my name was like SAR on my like official SAR. document. Yeah, they were like, oh SAR. So when I log in, it's just like, SAR. I'm like, so I had that with an online document once for a credit card. It couldn't fit my whole name. So I just did first and last. And then because of that, <laughs> oh, nothing issues. matched my, cause it's like this name this doesn't match the bank, bank account. account. Yeah. Cause my bank account has my middle name. And so I was like, sorry, we can't do anything for you. Cause it's not the same name and it doesn't even match your, Passport your ID. Yeah. I'm just like, guys, having, if you, if you decide, if you can decide to have or have not a middle name, delete your middle name, yeah. throw it away. Yeah, Why do we have that. them? <laughs> we don't I mean, <laughs> but even without my middle name, my full name wouldn't fit on this like oh. banking thing. So yeah, it was a whole nightmare. So basically change your name before you move here. <laughs> you should just be like Bill Joe. Yeah. Bill Joe, that, like, that's like short just enough. two initials. Yeah. Or BJ. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that was you. <laughs> Well, anyway, oh the point God. is don't have a name. Just be, just have a kanji. Have, have yeah. no name when you come here. Ah. Delete your identity. <laughs> a lot of things to go through, especially if you're coming from overseas and you have a long name or some. Yeah, stuff like, like I, I still think of like I had this one Indian friend in high school. Her long last name was so long. Oh my god! I just like I hope she never has to move to, Japan. She never comes to Japan. It was so long. <laughs> There's just oh. so many things that can go wrong. You know, yeah. taxes, taxes from other countries, like income if you have anything. I cried so much accounts, in tax like... season. I didn't know what I was doing. It's all really rough. If you think it's rough and you're in country then do it all plus no one tells you what you got to do people yeah. don't tell you you just find out when it's too late you're like i didn't know yeah well goodbye pr yeah. goodbye life yeah because yeah if you do something wrong it, ha it can have consequences 10 years from then if you're like oh i want to be a permanent resident they're like well you didn't pay your pension eight years ago so well, i guess you can't have it you know it's yeah. it's there's so many things yeah so uh yeah long story short awesome place but lots of baggage we got convenience stores Sammy. i can have a coffee whenever Whenever I want it. I don't know why I'm doing this accent. One last pro that I want to discuss is not exclusive to Japan, but just living abroad is that it changes your outlook on life mm. and you can change as a person in a positive way, mostly. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And it's really great for character, like personal development to get out of your comfort zone and do something because I think a lot of people on the edge are like, oh, I'd love to live in Japan, but I'm scared or I don't know if it's for me or what if I don't fit in? And I'm like, just do it. Like yeah. we have no idea what we're doing daily. We are winging <laughs> like, I, I'm just talking on behalf of you, but for me, I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm like, am I going to still be here by Christmas probably maybe who yeah. knows but like I would not change any of it because I have had so many life experiences I met some of my best friends and I've seen some of the most beautiful places in the world so if you're thinking about moving to Japan yeah come to Japan and you'll thank me yeah. and Emma later <laughs> yeah thank us well, yeah. I don't know maybe one person will get their visa application that's true there's a working holiday it's until you're 30 other after yeah. that I don't know just apply for jet depends on what country you're yeah, in as well America, America. 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 for me I would not change anything I have loved my life in Japan and it's just been the most amazing experience. I'm very, very, very glad that I came here. <laughs> Sometimes I do think like, what would my life have been like if I stayed in Australia? And I'm like, it would have been good, a different good. It would have been different. And that's the thing, like, if it's like, oh, what if I regret it? What if it goes wrong? It's like, At least you, you, tried. you tried, you know, it, it's going to be different. Like life's going to go on no matter what way. And this way you get to learn what it's like to live in Japan. And I don't think there's any age barrier. Like you can do this even when you're in retirement, you can just do it. So long as you have like the will, there's a way. Okay. You don't think so? I think visas get much more difficult when you're older. But you can still do it. I think it's still feasible. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I just know like some visas have like limits. limits. Yeah, but yeah. I don't know. Like, it depends. Look into it. Yeah, look, yeah, into, look it. into it. I think you can do it. I believe. I'm a positive believer. Yeah, that's true. Drop I'm, the pens. To Come to Japan. <laughs> Drop your pens. <laughs> and we'll see you here. That's the end of the video. Because yeah. we got to go out and live our best lives in Japan. Yeah. We have to yeah. hit up the kombini for our next video. So, so check sorry. it out. But yeah. Uh, thanks so much for watching and let us know in the comments down below if I mean if you live in Japan or if you relate to mm. any of these things even if you don't live in Japan do you relate <laughs> what are the pros and cons about living abroad in particular Japan let us know yeah. and we'll see you in another video bye bye
Hey, I'm on yeah. seven, baby. Yeah, seven years. That's crazy. I was like, I'm so sorry, mom, I left. Like, I, I was like, I'm going on a working holiday and I never came back. That's my story though. I was That's like, my I, story didn't, story I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't plan that though. I was like, I'm yeah. so sorry.